guys welcome back to channel dimensions of anatomy in this video we will be discussing the mandibular nerve which is an important topic exam wise most of for dental students because mandibular nerve supplies some of the structures which the dental surgeons take care of as with any other nerve we will be dealing mandibular nerve under the following sections nuclei and functional components origin cause and relations branches and distribution and finally the clinical anatomy mandibular nerve is the largest mixed branch of trigeminal nerve which is the fifth cranial nerve it is the nerve of the first branchial arch branchial arches we will deal in a video separately while dealing embryology for the time being just know that mandibular nerve is the nerve of the first branchial arch coming to nuclei and functional components mandibular nerve is a branch of trigeminal nerve which is the fifth cranial nerve like any other cranial nerve trigeminal nerve also originates from brain stem the gray matter of brain stem is subdivided into seven functional components or functional columns the origin and details of functional components we will deal in a separate video for the time being just know that the entire gray matter of brain stem is subdivided into seven functional columns or components each with a separate set of functions the nuclei which gives rise to mandibular nerve nuclei refers to collection of neuronal cell bodies the axons of which bunch together to form the nerve in question so the nuclei which gives rise to the mandibular nerve or four in number that is the spinal nucleus of five superior sensory nucleus of five mesencephalic nucleus and nucleus of five these four nuclei which gives origin to the mandibular nerve are associated with two functional components of brain stem that is general somatic afferent and branchial efferent the spinal nucleus of five superior sensory nucleus of five and mesencephalic nucleus are associated with the general somatic afferent functional column which is concerned with pain temperature touch pressure and proprioception whereas the nucleus of five is associated with the branchial efferent otherwise called spatial visceral efferent functional column which is concerned with motor supply to the first arch muscles so there are four nuclei which give rise to the mandibular nerve associated with two functional columns of the brain stem before moving on to the next sections that is origin cause and relation branches and distribution of mandibular nerve as usual let's draw a simple schematic diagram including all the features here we go this is the trigeminal ganglion with ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular division the mandibular division starts as a large sensory and a small motor root it exits the skull through foramen ovale just below the foramen ovale it unites to form the main trunk but the main trunk soon divides into anterior and posterior division the first branch from main trunk is nervous spinosus which re-enters the skull through foramen spinosum the other branch from main trunk is nerve to medial pterygoid which after supplying medial pterygoid through the otic ganglion supplies two other muscles the first branch from posterior division is auricular temporal nerve which arises as two roots encircling the middle meningeal artery the two roots unite to form the trunk of the nerve which ascends up we will leave the posterior division there for the time being and first follow the anterior division 
the anterior division first gives out muscular branches that is masseteric, deep temporal and nerve to lateral pterygoid and then continues down as buccal nerve which is sensory. Following the posterior division, the other two branches of posterior division are lingual and inferior alveolar nerve. The lingual nerve runs downwards and forwards. Soon it is joined by corda tympani nerve, which is a branch of facial nerve. It then lies very close to the medial surface of the lower third molar teeth in contact with mandible. Then it hooks the submandibular duct. And then finally divides into terminal branches supplying the tongue. Following the inferior alveolar nerve, it descends down and enters the mandibular foramen. Before entering the mandibular foramen, it gives out the mylohyoid nerve which runs in mylohyoid groove and supplies mylohyoid muscle. The nerve after entering the mandibular canal gives out branches to all the lower teeth. Then it exits the mandibular canal through mendel foramen. Now it is called mendel nerve. It also gives an incisive branch. Now we will add color to the diagram. We will also stylize our tongue and mandible a little bit. Yes, our diagram is ready. Let's move on to the slide. Moving on to the origin. As we already saw, mandibular nerve is a branch of trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve. It arises as a large sensory root and a small motor root from the lateral part of the trigeminal ganglion. Moving on to cause and relations. Both the roots that is the sensory root and motor root exit the skull by passing through foramen ovale. Just below the foramen both the roots unite to form a single trunk called the main trunk of the mandibular nerve. The main trunk of the nerve lies in infratemporal fossa deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle and after a very short course the main trunk divides into small anterior division and a large posterior division. Moving on to the branches, there are 9 branches in total, 2 from main trunk, 4 from anterior division and 3 from posterior division. The branches from main trunk are number 1, meningeal branch otherwise called nervous spinosus, nerve to medial pterygoid muscle. The branches from anterior division are buccal nerve which is the sensory nerve and nerves to all the other muscles of mastication except medial pterygoid which receives its nerve supply from the main trunk that is masseteric nerve to the masseter muscle, two deep temporal nerves to the temporalis and nerve to lateral pterygoid muscle. Coming to branches from posterior division, there are three in number. 1. Auriculotemporal nerve, 2. Lingual nerve and 3. Inferior alveolar nerve. So there are totally 9 branches, meningeal branch, nerve to medial pterygoid both from main trunk, buccal, masseteric, 2 deep temporal and nerve to lateral pterygoid from anterior division, auriculotemporal, lingual and inferior alveolar from posterior division. 
okay let's see the branches and distribution in detail okay the first branch is meningeal branch otherwise called nervous spinosis it arises from the main trunk and re-enters the skull through foramen spinosus. It supplies the dura mater of middle cranial fossa. The next branch is nerve to medial pterygoid. It also arises from the main trunk and supplies the medial pterygoid muscle. It gives out a motor route which passes through the aortic ganglion without relay and supplies two other muscles that is tensor valley palatinate and tensor tympani. Coming to the anterior division, the first branch we will see is buccal nerve. It is a sensory nerve. It passes through the gap between the two heads of lateral pterygoid runs downwards and forwards and supplies the cheek. The next is the masseteric nerve. It emerges at the upper border of lateral pterygoid, passes through the mandibular notch between the coronoid and cordylar process, supplies the masseter muscle and also TMJ that is temporomandibular joint. Next in line is the two deep temporal nerves that is anterior and posterior deep temporal nerve. They enter the deep surface of temporalis and supply it. Next is nerve to lateral pterygoid which supplies the lateral pterygoid muscle. Coming to the posterior division, the first branch is auriculotemporal nerve. It arises as two small rootlets which encircle the middle meningeal artery. The two small rootlets unite after encircling the middle meningeal artery and the nerve runs backwards between the neck of the mandible and spinomandibular ligament above the maxillary artery. Behind the neck of the mandible, the nerve ascends upwards on the temple. The auriculotemporal nerve has an auricular part and temporal part. The auricular part supplies skin of the tragus, upper part of pinna, external acoustic meatus and tympanic membrane. The temporal part supplies the skin of the temple, parotid gland and temporomandibular joint. The next branch is the lingual nerve. Lingual nerve in itself is a separate important exam topic. The lingual nerve arises as the branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve about 1 cm below the skull. By about 2 cm below the skull, this lingual nerve is joined by corda tympani nerve which is a branch of facial nerve. Okay. This corda tympani nerve joins the lingual nerve by about 2 cm below the skull. The lingual nerve emerges from the lower border of lateral pterygoid and then runs downwards and forwards between the ramus of mandible and medial pterygoid muscle. Then it lies in direct contact with mandible medial to third molar teeth. This relation is clinically and surgically relevant. Most of our dental surgeons will come to the clinical relevance later. Now remember, it lies in direct contact with mandible, medial to third molar teeth, runs over 
hyoglossus and then genioglossus winds around the submandibular duct and this is submandibular duct here it winds around the submandibular duct then terminates by dividing into smaller branches which supply the tongue coming to the distribution of lingual nerve it is general sensory to anterior two-third of the tongue and floor of the mouth it is gustatory to anterior two-third of the tongue that is it carries the taste sensation from anterior two-third of the tongue but here the fibers carrying the taste sensation are not that of lingual nerve as such but are derived from corda tympani now which joins the lingual nerve the same way it is also secretomotor to submandibular and sublingual salivary gland but here again the fibers come from corda tympani nerve so lingual nerve as such directly provides general sensation to anterior two-third of the tongue and through fibers of corda tympani nerve it also provides gustatory sensation to anterior two-third of the tongue and secretomotor supply to submandibular and sublingual salivary glands Coming to the last branch that is the inferior alveolar nerve. Inferior alveolar nerve is in itself a separate important exam topic as such. The inferior alveolar nerve is the larger terminal branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve. It runs vertically downwards between the spinomandibular ligament and medial pterygoid muscle. It enters the mandibular foramen and runs within the mandible in the mandibular cana, accompanied by inferior alveolar artery. Coming to the branches of inferior alveolar nerve, it gives out a mylohyoid branch just before it enters the mandibular foramen gives out a mylohyoid branch just before it enters the mandibular foramen. This mylohyoid branch runs in the mylohyoid groove and it supplies mylohyoid muscle and anterior belly of digastric. The inferior alveolar nerve after giving the mylohyoid branch enters the mandibular foramen into the mandibular canal within the mandibular canal it gives branches to all the mandibular teeth and gums then it exits the mandibular canal through mental foramen and after emerging from mental foramen it is called Mendel nerve. This Mendel nerve supplies the skin of chin and lower lip. This Mendel nerve also gives out an incisive branch which supplies labial aspect of gums of lower anterior teeth. So we have covered all the branches of mandibular nerve. Now we will move on to the next section that is clinical anatomy. First we will see the clinical testing of mandibular nerve. The motor part of the mandibular nerve is tested clinically by asking the patient to clench the teeth and feeling for contraction of masseter and temporalis. We know that mandibular nerve provides motor supply to all the muscles of mastication including masseter and temporalis. So, in order to test the motor part, the patient is asked to clench his teeth and the contraction of masseter and temporalis is felt. If mandibular nerve of one side is paralyzed, on opening the jaw, as you see in picture, on opening the jaw, the jaw deviates to the paralyzed side due to the action of normal lateral pterygoid of the opposite side. So, remember, if one side mandibular nerve is paralyzed, on opening the mouth, the jaw deviates to the paralyzed side. 
the pterygoids are specifically tested by moving the chin from side to side. We know that the general sensation to anterior two third of the tongue is provided by lingual nerve which is a branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve. In carcinoma of tongue, pain from the tongue radiates to area supplied by auricular temporal nerve that is the ear and temporal fossa because the nerve which supplies the tongue that is the lingual nerve and the auricular temporal nerve both come from the same posterior division of mandibular nerve. So, the pain from tongue is radiated or referred to the area supplied by auricular temporal nerve. And this pain due to carcinoma of tongue can be relieved by dividing the lingual nerve and this division is done at the point where it is in direct contact with mandible medial to the lower third molar teeth. Trigeminal neuralgia is a condition characterized by pain of unknown origin in areas supplied by trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal neuralgia involving the mandibular division is often very difficult to treat. The permanent cure for such a trigeminal neuralgia is division of sensory root of trigeminal nerve and this division is done in the trigeminal ganglion but the ophthalmic fibers in supramedial part are spared to avoid loss of corneal reflux and damage to cornea comes the most important clinical and surgical relevance as far as dental students are concerned the extraction of impacted third molar teeth. In dental surgery, impaction refers to malposition, partially erupted or unerupted third molar teeth causing clinical symptoms like pain. The treatment of choice for an impacted third molar teeth is surgical removal or surgical extraction of the impacted third molar teeth during surgical removal of such an impacted lower third molar teeth, every care must be taken to preserve or protect the lingual nerve which we already saw causes just medial to the third molar teeth in direct contact with mandible. If the lingual nerve is injured during the process, it will lead to loss of all sensation, both general sensation and gustatory sensation from anterior two-third of the tongue, which is a very serious post-operative complication. So, it should be avoided at all costs. And so, during the surgical removal of impacted third molar teeth, during instrumentation for the same, all care must be taken not to injure the lingual nerve which causes very close medial to the third molar in direct contact with mandible. Coming to jaw jerk reflex, tapping the chin causes reflex contraction of pterygoid muscles. Both afferent and efferent loops of this reflex is supplied by mandibular nerve. Any lesion in foramen ovale through which the mandibular nerve exits the skull, okay. any lesion in foramen ovale leads to loss of this jaw jerk reflex along with paresthesia along the mandible, tongue and temporal region and paralysis of muscles of mastication. Another clinical significance which is very very important as far as dental students are concerned and which as dental surgeons they might be applying 
pretty much every day in their practice is inferior alveolar nerve block. In order to extract or do any operative procedure like root canal treatment in a mandibular teeth, the inferior alveolar nerve should be anesthetized because we know the inferior alveolar nerve is the nerve which supplies all the mandibular teeth. So, in order to do any procedure in mandibular teeth, the inferior alveolar nerve should be anesthetized. The inferior alveolar nerve is anesthetized by injecting the anesthetic drug around the nerve just before it enters the mandibular canal at the location just before it enters the mandibular canal. There are a few clinical techniques to achieve it which the dental students will learn in oral and maxillofacial surgery. But for the time being, just remember all the mandibular teeth are supplied by inferior alveolar nerve and in order to do any dental procedure in any mandibular teeth, the inferior alveolar nerve should be anesthetized and this is achieved by injecting the anesthetic drug at the site just before it enters the mandibular canal. The inferior alveolar nerve may be injured in fracture of mandible involving the mandibular canal. In such cases, injury is assessed by testing the nerve, by testing the sensation over the chin. The class on mandibular nerve ends. If you like the class, do hit the like button. For more such classes, keep the channel subscribed. PDF notes are available for download at the link in the description. For live online classes and exam guidance, please contact the mail provided in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.